Hello, every folks, and good morning. Welcome to another edition of Know Your Unit. Are you tired of your sad, squishy, pathetic humans doing things like taking damage and dying? Are you tired of wizards doing their wizard thing and actually hurting you in any way? Are you tired of those situations where, you know, you simply want to go about your day, send your people into a gigantic hellhole, and watch them come out with giant piles of treasure and shiny objects, and yet for some reason they come back reporting casualties? Well, let's go ahead and fix those problems for you here today and talk about the hoplite. All right, so just like many other lizard units, they are, quite frankly, in many ways, far superior to their human counterparts in a way that is almost comical. Of course, I joke. I mean, obviously, stuff like a knight will still be able to uh, hold up pretty darn well in the end game. But when it comes to uh, to tanks, few are going to be able to tank as hard as the hoplite. In fact, they are. A pretty much objectively the best anti-mage unit in the entire game. Uh, being a case where they can actually ignore up to uh, four magic attacks, I believe, uh, by the time that they get their maximum rank of apostate, um, as well as being able to uh, have to equip lots of armor that is able to almost nullify their damage outright. Um, as far as generic units go, they are probably going to be some of the uh, toughest out there, and in many cases their defensive options may well completely, once again, uh, out, uh, outstrip that of even the, uh, the Lord and stuff like that. So. What makes them so dang good? Well, uh, we've got a, uh, a, a variety of different features on this guy. For one thing, we've got the usual hyper armor type of stuff. We've got evade for getting rid of one physical attack, apostate for getting rid of a lot of magical attacks, and it's that combination of typically coming in with relic <laughs> dragon shields, which can be upgraded to, I believe it's uh, like 20-something uh, uh, percent resistance against a particular element, um, on top of uh, having uh, having access to, uh, to the ability to just completely ignore several of those, that make these guys, once they're comple uh, completely built up near immune to things like summons and this actually leads to a funny case where if you have a low health uh, hoplite if you keep them at low health and you master the, uh, using them at low health while uh, while using their hyper armor skills they will become entirely immune to any kind of summon attacks simply because summons will stop if they've judged that they have a chance to kill something they typically will do about you know one two hundred health per shot and if they're already at low health well if you're running evade you don't have to worry about physical attacks if you're running high enough armor typically stuff won't be doing more than one to two hundred to you anyway outside of a finisher and if a summon has a chance to do that kind of thing and it determines well i probably would have had a chance to kill here it'll stop that count right there it doesn't care if it's like a tier two and it was about to shoot seven of them it will stop right there it's a weird little quirk and i love that you can do this it's something that i've used that i've used and abused several times in places like sam bronzo where some of the uh, you know some of the higher end summoners get absolutely insane um now, they're, I mean, they're amazing at dealing with it, even in the uh, worst case scenario. Again, being able to almost entirely uh, resist any uh, any uh, uh, powerful benefits out of uh, element uh, bonuses and stuff like that, while also being able to completely nullify multiple hits of it at the same time. Um, as far as weapon access goes, they have access to uh, spears, swords, uh, axes, hammers, and crossbows. The crossbows may seem like an odd one, but due to their uh, like insanely high strength, they're just a another case of just a unit that's going to hit unusually hard with crossbows. Um, in fact, uh, running a, um, a, a uh, hoplite with a crossbow was one of my favorite things on my first time through the game. Um, just constantly being very surprised at how much they were actually doing with things like brimstone hail um when we're talking about their other weapon options you may notice that there's a lot of debuff weapons on that list and that makes them awesome for this because they also come in with pincer they have the usuals obviously your health up your mp up your uh, you know your charm and petrify and all that kind of thing but the fact that we've got a combination of pincers and things like poison spears as well as the fact that they can run dragon sire means that unless you're going in a sp like I don't know why I'm saying suspiciously. If you're particularly having an issue with a beast unit for some reason, instead of a dragon or something, then in most cases, these guys are just a better Dragoon. They're a weird combination of the uh, Dragoon, Buccaneer, and, uh, uh, and uh, a Knight in a lot of different ways, in a lot of very particular ways. It's really hard to say whether one is objectively better than the other and just due to how many different scenarios you can run into, but you can lean really hard into their hyper armor, you can abuse it for a lot of things, and the fact that they get access to so many debuff weapons means that you can do crap like this right there, where you can like give one of them a false strike cutlass, you give another one a poison spear, you have them pincer together, suddenly you're removing accuracy or dropping poison and things like that, leading to this fun endgame scenario right here where basically I just have a bunch of uh, hoplites running around with, uh, uh, with uh, debuff 
debuff weapons, and I have a uh, hyper armor denim, uh, just running around and uh, healing them up whenever needed. In this case, I believe I might have even taken his heal off and just given him resurrect and conserve MP. So literally, it's just like having zombies without the downside of having zombies. Um, and they will just wreck through everything. You, you can go and put Steadfast on there for the sake of making sure they don't fall down a hole or something. But realistically, they don't even need their weapon skills in a lot of cases. You can just drop all of these debuff weapons on them and let them go to town. Uh, you, want, you want to go see uh, more breaches on stuff? Get your Volges in there. You want more poisons? You get your Scorpions. You get your Cutlasses. You get your Damask Swords. Like, Damask Swords and Cutlasses are going to be great on these guys. Hell, due to their hyper armor, they don't always even need the shields. And you can just run one or the other. If you want, you'd stick the more powerful one in the offhand, that's the one that they'll use on their on turn, and then if they're pincering, they'll use the one in their main hand, if you want your stone on there, for example. Again, you can do so much fun stuff with this. It's pretty darn fantastic. Um, honestly, it's not even worth going for the um, uh, for the uh, more powerful weapons in their hands because, frankly, again, the debuffs will just do the job. Again, it's amazing to me how many folks will miss something like, well, technically, a higher-end spear might do like 100 extra damage, but that poison's going to do, you know, 3, 4, potentially up to 1,000 in the meantime. So, you know, is it really less? <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, Scorpion plus one is probably the most overpowered weapon in the game. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. They get a lot of really cool stuff like this. If you want to, for some, like, if for some reason you roll one with a high mind score, uh, might be worth going for uh, something like a Caldia build. If you want a lighter weight stun build, you've always got the uh, uh, the, uh, the Iron Fan for them. Though realistically, uh, Damask Hammer is going to do that job better. Damask Axe is there. You can technically go for the uh, the Misstep Axes, though I'm not really sure why you'd want to. Um, and uh, yeah. As, as you can probably tell, friggin' fantastic options on these guys, great for AI teams, great for everything. If you love an attrition unit that's just able to squeeze the ever-loving Christ out of everything in front of them, then that's what the Hoplite is here for. Here to provide, as it will. And in fact, uh, going back to that crossbow example, if you want to constantly have stun everywhere, again, nice big heavy shield, combine that in with a crossbow, just lots of free stun, free silence over on everybody. I literally had a guy running one Balder, one Damask at one point, just going and dropping different debuffs at range, and then going in for those brimstone hails. Because of the fact that they don't have a shield, they would get targeted more often, making use of that hyper armor more often, and you can kind of get the idea why I freaking love these dudes. As far as uh, built-in features, well, they don't have the uh, built-in counter punch of the Juggernaut, but uh, either way, they still have fantastic armor, they have fantastic gear options. And uh, when it says that they're the, uh, the foot soldier on their class mark, that is correct. They are the ultimate grunt, and in fact, they're actually one of the best units for uh, going and dealing with uh, Dorgi at the end of the game if you're, uh, uh, if you're looking for that kind of option. Because if you've never uh, never really looked into it, well, he does attack three times. He's highly susceptible to stun and highly susceptible to false strike, which also happens to be two things that he can very conveniently uh, be running with this kind of build here, right? So essentially, you have you know your stun sword in one hand, your your false strike sword in the other hand. Uh, you go ahead and uh, put a couple hoplites in there, and there you go. You got a very easy hard counter to to an encounter that a lot of folks have an issue with. Uh, you can recruit these guys just about dang near anywhere uh, uh, out in the field. Uh, as far as acquiring lizards, they're not the most challenging thing in the world. If you just want to go get hoplites as they are, first map into Pirate's Graveyard, you can just follow them along the cliff. There's a couple hoplites that'll spawn on the top of the cliff. All you gotta do is block off that rock, talk to them a few times, you'll get your free relics, you'll get your free uh, hoplites, totally free! Like, you literally just need a wizard up there in the front, or more realistically, Lord Denim uh, running uh, uh, Cokes. And then, yeah, if you have a Patriarch or Matriarch, they can do the recruiting job even better, because they can use their own Hyper Armor to take these guys' insane hits when they come. Realistically, in most cases, I would recommend turning off their finishers, but you know what? If you want to see them do some crazy stuff, might as well leave them on, I suppose. Um, again, False Strike Cutlasses with, uh, uh, with Vile Wound is definitely going to do a great job for you all the same. So, that is about that. Um, I think uh, I think these guys absolutely rule. Um, as far as a, an AI team goes, honestly, like, look at this. It... In this particular setup, again, they're they're set up in a way that they're being knocked out over and over because I didn't put a heal on there for some reason, apparently. But all the same, like, there, there's nothing that they can't handle. Uh, right now, I think it's even the Cutlass guy that's dropping thousands on dragons with... I forget if that even happened in the background here. Um, but yeah, they're just a great universal counter to pretty much everything. Y'all have yourselves a good one. Take care, and I hope you have some fun.